Oh, I say, Gilroy. Goodbye, Mrs. Marbury. This is the happiest moment in my life. Thank you, Lieutenant Hayworth. <laughs> You're a lucky devil. I know. <laughs> Don't forget, leaves up Tuesday at 6 p.m. a chance. That chance I have a forgetting. Goodbye. I like your Roy. He's such a boy. Do you like him better than his brother, Bob? Now, Derek, don't tease me about Bob Hayes. <laughs> After all, if it hadn't been for him, I'd never have met you. Good old Bob. Would he be surprised to hear we're married? Surprised is a pale word. He'll be dumbfounded, annoyed, and irritated. Oh, he'll get over it. He always has. And did you always get over it, too? <laughs> always. Now, Derek Marble, you told me oh, that... Oh, darling, I'm joking. There never has been anyone else. And there never will be. There never could be for me. Ever. Oh, Derek, I hate to think we are going back. Don't think about it, Lucy. Just think about now. I'm almost afraid to think. There's so little time. Only six days more. Six days? Why, that's an age. It's almost twice as long as we've known each other. Oh, Derek, what fools we are. What does it matter, darling? So long as we're fools together. Here. Don't you do that again, Sir Sudden Blight. I was thinking of Captain Hayworth's face when they told him Mr. Marbury had pinched his girl. And his brother, best man too. <laughs> he blew himself out like a frog. <laughs> He'd been caught in it for four months. And up comes Mr. Marbury and snaps her from right under his nose. <laughs> <laughs> snaps the word. Three days or four, he don't know her from Adam. And the fourth, he leads her to the halter. <laughs> Real snappy, I calls it. <laughs> Is mine? Uh, no, sir. Uh, Mr. Marbury, sir. Uh, here's your boots, sir. Are they supposed to be clean? No, sir. Oh, I, I mean, I mean, yes, sir. Yes, you were sir. right the first time. Clean them again. But uh, Mr. Marbury's boots, sir. You had me. Clean them at once. What's that you're cooking? Just a little welcome home for Mr. Marbury, sir. Bring me some. Did you hear me? Bring me some. Yes, sir. tea I've ever tasted. Well, it ain't supposed to be tea, sir. It's soup, sir. The next time you men attempt to be funny, you'll return to your platoon. Hasn't he got a nice even temper? What, him? An even temper? Of course it's even. It's nasty all the time. This is the filthiest tea I've ever tasted, says he. Well, what was it? The skimming off the stew? That's just what you would say with your upbringing. It's consomme. That's what it is. I is that what it is? It smells like bully beef to me. You're just like Captain Aworth, you are. You ain't got no imagination. You and Captain Aworth are just two of a kind. That's what you are. And that's why you're polishing his boots so loving. If I'm not too inquisitive, do you two think you're back in the stable? Yes, sir. Well, thanks to your laziness, it looks like one and it smells like one. Tonight you're cleaning from end to end, do you understand? Yes, sir. Now get out. Hey, 
But I wouldn't rag the little blight herself, are you? I think he does rather well by us. Yes, for you and Gilroy. What's the repast tonight, Meadows? Well, sir, the horse's doobers is one onion and half a tin of sardines. The soup is consomme au croutons and the entry is pomme de terre's old book. <laughs> I told you not to serve any more of that filthy bully beef. That's all they had, sir. Oh, calm down, Hayworth. You're not at the Ritz. What else is there, Meadows? Well, there's plum and apple for the sweet, sir, to be followed or accompanied by a mug of Lipton's have a condensed cow, sir. <laughs> all right, all right, come on, let's have it. Very good, sir. Hey, what's going on out there, anyway? Ah, oh, same old bilge. Headquarters keeps thinking there'll be an attack, but nothing ever happens. Uh, hello, Marbury. Hello, Major. I hear you joined the select band of married men, what? Congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm sending you out tonight. Yes, sir. Headquarters informs us that Fritz is getting ready for a strop. Take a look at their wire and find out if they're up to anything. Yes, sir. Shall I order the detail? No, it's ordered. Sergeant Matthews and six men will report to you at nine. I see they've removed any identification, especially letters, you know. Just in case. Right, sir. And that's all. Well, good luck, Hayworth. Thank you, sir. Oh, uh, Marbury, I'd like to see you when you've finished. Right, sir. Well, that's broken up a perfectly good dinner party. We well, don't have to go till nine o'clock, do you? No, not till nine. Just twenty minutes. What do you mean? Just twenty minutes. I mean only twenty minutes. Hawkins. Yes, sir. Bring a cork. With a bottle wrapped around it, sir. Just a cork. Yes, sir. And toast it. Yes, sir. Hawkins. Yes, sir. Bring me the bottle. Yes, sir. Let's drink your first time over. Bob? No, thanks. Well, here's how. May God have mercy on us. Oh, I say, I... I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Well, I better go see what the Major wants. One carbonized cork. Take the stuff out, Hawkins. Yes, sir. You'll have to black up, Gilroy. There's a moon out. You know, there's something spooky about creeping on your belly out there in the dark. Expecting any minute nothing to come from nowhere and hit you from behind. And it's hard, too. They always black their faces. It don't look human. That's how the Fritzies can't see how pale they feel. I hate to see a young'un like him go out there in one of them there scouting raids. I don't know either. Shut up, you swine! Get out! Get out! Report to your patrol. Yes, sir. Stand up. You know what you've done with that outburst? You've as much as told those two men that you, my brother, can't face it. That's lovely news to spread about, isn't it? Bob, you don't understand. Ah, yes, I do. I know you backward. But you're not going to pull our name in the mud. Why do you suppose I had you sent to me in the first place? Not because I liked having you around, did you? I was afraid to trust you with anyone else. But you're going through with us tonight. You're going through without any further hysterics. Do you understand? I'll be back to see you push off.
Now, Barbary, you know exactly what you're to do. Yes, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. Here are my things. Have matters burn them, will you? Two more minutes. Look here, Gilroy. This is your first time over. Don't do that. Minute counting's deadly. I know, I've tried it. I'll tell you when to go. It's really not so bad. There's one awful moment just before when you think the bottom's dropped out of everything. Then you're over and the excitement carries you through. But you don't understand. I'm not afraid of dying. I'm afraid of fear. That intangible horror which prompts a convict to hang himself rather than be hanged. Steady, steady. The sensations aren't unique, you know. We've all had them. Here, have a drink. It's no use. I can't get drunk. It doesn't bite somehow. Marbury, were you ever afraid of the dark, the unknown? Did you ever think of being out there and seeing what were men? A twisted, distorted mass with dead eyes looking at you. Did you? Did you? No, no, no. Look here, old man, don't be morbid. We all have to pass through this particular kind of hell. We must go through with it. That's right. We must go through with it. It's almost time. Everything all right now? Yes, everything's all right. Now. Thanks, Marbury. I wish I could be like you. Want me to come up with you? Thanks, old man. I'll go alone. Goodbye. Good luck, old boy. What's all this? Come on, Gilroy, get up. Shot himself, eh? Nice little scandal for me. Well, I might as well face it. Come on, let's get into a bunk. I'll call the M.O. and see what we can do for him. You're too late, Bob. Boy's dead. And his men are waiting. I can take his detail and still be back in time. All right, I'm ready. He can't be found here like this. Of course not. Help me get him over the parapet. I'll drag him out as far as I can. Come on, let's go. I wonder what's happened to young Aworth. What's happened to Aworth now? All right, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Let's go.
What's the matter, Hayworth? Just a little tired, sir. Your brother and his scouting party get off all right? Yes, sir. Quite all right. Where's Mabry? I don't know, sir. Did you want him? No. No hurry. When he comes in, tell him I'd like to see him. Very good, sir. Here's where we separate. Take your three men and go to the left. Yes, sir. Good luck, sir. Same to you. Take them back to the trench. The barrage is starting. Yes, sir. now. What's his name? No identification. Shell shock. Are you a soldier? What? That's a funny one. What's your name? I don't know. You mean you don't know your own name? No. I don't know. Oh, come on now. Don't be silly. Of course you know your own name. I tell you, I don't know. There, there. You're all right. Now, now, now. Think hard. Derry, Drake, Drake, eh? All right, Drake. Uh, now the Christian name. Is it uh, Albert, Benjamin, Charles, Edward, John, George? Uh, John, John, John Drake. Now, uh, what's your age? I don't know. Hmm. I'll put you down as 35. And then I'm giving you all the best of it. No use asking you anything else, I suppose. Uh, where you were born, next of kin and so forth. Well, we'll let it go for a day or two. But in the meantime, don't forget your name is John Drake. John Drake. Okay. Oh. And you didn't learn any more about Derek? 
No more than I wrote you. I didn't see him before the attack, and afterwards no one seemed to know what happened to him. But someone must know. There weren't very many of us left. Please forgive me. I'm thinking only of myself. Poor Gilroy was killed in action, wasn't he? Yes. Dear brave lad. It must have been a blow to General Hayworth. Father was terribly upset. But what a comfort to know he died a hero for king and country. Quite. Blood will tell. I remember your poor dear mother told me that there had been a Hayworth in every war since 1066. And everyone died a hero. And I know you'll do the same. Will you have another cup of tea, Aunt Cynthia? Oh, uh, no, 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 dear. Bob? Thank you, no, I... I must be going very soon. Please don't go. I want to speak to you about Derek Marbury's family. Very nice people, I suppose. Though his parents were dead when I knew him. But you went to school together, didn't you? In Canada. My family returned to England. I didn't see him again until after we joined the same company. You know, none of us have ever met Lucy's husband. Not even Alan. By the way, is your brother at home now? No. He's in France. He's just got his wings in the Royal Flying Corps. That's splendid. Well, I... Really, I must be going. Lady Heatherly? Goodbye, Captain Hayworth. May I call again before my leave is over? Please do. And if you get any word of Derek... I'll get in touch with you at once. Goodbye, Bob. Uh, Henry Benson. You report back to your unit. Here are your orders. John Drake? Is John Drake here? I say balmy. Don't you know your own name? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, Drake? Yes, sir. Oh. We have no trace of your military records, so we don't know your unit. You're being evacuated to the Army Service Corps. Here are your orders. Thank you, sir. Next, William Lacey. Well, goodbye, all bean. No more trenches for you. Well, what do you mean? Well, you're in the cushiest spot in the service. A soft place to sleep and all the plum and apple you can eat. You'll never know there's a war on. Thanks. Right, Joe. Mark. Marbury. 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 No one I knew. Lucy should be here very soon. She said she was going to the doctors and would come right home. I hope she's not ill. No, it's just her nerves. She's simply obsessed with the idea that Mr. Marbury is still alive. Perhaps he is. But I understood that uh, missing was just something they said when they couldn't find the body. Isn't that so? Well, Lady Heatherly, that covers a number of possibilities. However, it might be better for Lucy if you let it go at that. What do you mean? Well, missing means that headquarters doesn't know exactly what happened to a man. He might have been killed in action, or he might have been taken prisoner. Or it might have been like a case of that chap they were talking about at the club. He was reported missing, and then they found him. An enlisted man in a non-fighting unit. But I don't understand. He couldn't stand the gap. That was the best way to lose himself. 
You mean Lucy's husband is a deserter? Captain Hayworth. I must ask you to explain. Explain? You gave my aunt to understand that Derek might be a deserter. I'm sorry, I... I hadn't intended to tell you. Tell me what? I saw your husband not 24 hours ago. You saw Derek? Where? Here in London, on the street. Why didn't you tell me at once? Where is he now? I don't know. He was in a private uniform. If I remember correctly, of some non-fighting unit. I spoke to him, but he refused to recognize me. Are you sure it was he? Perfectly sure. I'll call the war office. They'll be able to find him. Oh, but Lucy, that'll be very foolish. Don't you realize that to report Derek's appearance in a private uniform might lead to a charge of desertion in the face of fire? All that matters to me is that he is alive. If you persist in this view, you force me to make a report to the war office at once. Goodbye, Captain Hayworth. Goodbye, Lady Heatherly. Goodbye. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Come here, will you? Yes, sir. I said, look here. How would you play this? I'm red, you know. Yes, quite. Hurry up before the colonel gets back. I think if you take the knight with your queen, you'll win, old man. I beg your pardon, sir. I mean, I think I'd play it this way. <laughs> of course. <laughs> that, that does it, doesn't it? <laughs> Thanks awfully. <clears throat> Have we decided on your move yet, Peabody? Hmm? Uh, not, uh, not quite yet, sir, no. But, uh... Check, I think, sir. By Jove! If I hadn't seen you do it, I wouldn't have believed it. Neat move, boss. <laughs> <laughs> We'll play again tonight, Peabody. <laughs> um. I said, you know what we've done. Uh, yes, sir, you've won. Yes. And that means chess with the Colonel from now on, ad infinitum, ad nauseum. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. Yeah, but you, sh you should be more careful. I have it. Why don't you apply for a commission? And, and I recommend it. Me, sir? Yes. You surely don't enjoy being a waffle tail sergeant, do you? A waffle tail? Yes, look, I mean, sir. Oh, oh, yes, it's, <laughs> it's, it's just a little wearing, sir. <laughs> now, here's the plot, you see. With a commission, you could stay here and play with the Colonel, uh, and I could see something of the war. I'm sorry, sir, I can't do it. What? Well, don't you think I want to see something of this war, too? Oh, well, look here. You stay and play chess with the Colonel just long enough for me to get up to the front. And then I'll see that you're transferred. Is it a go? It's a go, sir. <laughs> well, we got here, didn't we, huh? Thanks to you, Peabody, we did. <laughs> Tell me, how went the chess with the Colonel? Strange the brave deeds we do for our country. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs>
Morning, Neville. Everything ready? Yes, Major Drake. They're just warming up the old bus. Good. I was writing to my sister while I waited. I told her you were going to come along home with me next leave. That's right. I haven't been back in years. I'm going to enjoy it. This is Lucy. Oh, yes. So that's your sister. And this, uh, is the young hopeful. Yes, sir, that's Ricky. Chubby youngster, isn't he? <laughs> yes, he's splendid. Splendid. Well, come on, my lad, let's go. Hello, Neville. Good morning, sir. Oh. Here you are, sir. Thank you, Peabody. Peabody to see you, sir. I'll ask him to come in. Hello, Drake. Well, hello, Peabody. Well, thank heaven you're rational tonight. Well, what do you mean? Well, at least you know me. You didn't I? You've been as crazy as a loon. I've had a devil of a time with you. You bashed me in the eye once. Did I do that? Yes. Oh, I am sorry. You seemed to think young Neville had shot himself, that I was his brother or something. You were yelling at the top of your voice for me to put him over the parapet. Then you kept me awake all night, insisting that I wash your face. 
Said the mud hurt your eyes. Well, I'm terribly sorry, old man. That's all right. You certainly are a headstrong devil. You wouldn't go to hospital. You, you wouldn't do anything. How did I do this? By pulling young Neville out after the crash. Crash? Don't you remember that? Oh, yes. Yes, I do remember. I, I wasn't sure. I was very lucky, wasn't I? Oh. How is young Neville? Pretty bad. Lungs burned. And the Fritz has got him in the shoulder. They've taken him to hospital. I am sorry. Poor devil. Do you suppose I could see him? Well, he keeps on asking for you, but uh, they won't let him see anybody yet. Oh. I say, Peabody. Hello. Just a minute before you go, there's something I'd like to tell you. All right. It's something no one else knows. Are you sure you want to? Yes, I want you to know in case it should happen again. All right, fire away. Well, about three years ago, I woke up in a hospital, my mind a blank. This is the second time it's happened to me. And luckily, no one knew about it last time. Shell shock, what? Huh? So they said. I didn't know then how I got there, and I still don't know. They said they found me at a farmhouse near Luz, all dressed up in peasants' things. No identification? Not a scrap. But you must remember something. I, Your people, where you come from. No, I remember absolutely nothing. isn't it? I never expected to celebrate the end of the war this way. Oh, you'll be all right in a day or two. When you get back, we'll have a special celebration just for you. You needn't pretend. I know I'm never going home. That's why I told you about Lucy and Derek. I know. There's something under my pillow. Will you get it for me, old man? Of course I will. Is this it? Her picture with Ricky. I'd like you to take it to her. You'll go to see her in London just as soon as you get there, won't you? Of course. And you'll try to find her husband, won't you? I'll do my very, very best. I promised to find him. But you can do so much more than I ever could. Look here, old man, don't, don't try and talk now. Just see if you can rest a bit. But I can't, I can't wait. Here, try this. There, better? Thank you, sir. Look here, old boy, don't you worry. I'll go to London and see your sister and do what I can for her. And when you get well, well, we'll both find her husband. You know, it's awfully queer. Lucy has always believed he was alive. I didn't at first. I promised to help find him just to humor her. But somehow, now, I feel she was right. Why do you always evade me? Do you mean there's no chance? I'm afraid not. But I love you, Lucy. Does it mean nothing to you that all these years I've cared for no one else? I'm sorry, Bob. Isn't it time you gave up this nonsense about Marbury? I don't know what you mean. Why not face the facts? Let's grant that he may be alive. He must be. Supposing he is. 
Have you thought what it might mean if he comes back now? Disgrace upon your name and upon your child. He did nothing disgraceful. Oh. I've never believed that. Perhaps you think I didn't see him that night on the street. The knowledge that you did see him is what I've lived for. Ah, oh, my dear, no man is worth a love like that. Miss Lucy, Major Drake and Captain Peabody are here to see you. I'll be there in just a minute. Goodbye, Lucy. One way I'll see you again. I think it might be pleasanter for both of us if this is goodbye. I see Ricky has made you welcome. Oh, rather, yes. <laughs> Are you Major Drake? No, I'm the other fellow. This is Major Drake. I'm so glad you came. Oh, uh, this is Captain Sir Reginald Peabody. How do you do? How do you do? Shall we sit down? Ricky, darling. Nanny has some supper for you. But well, I'm gonna stay here. But they'll come again, darling. Now kiss Mummy and say goodnight to Major Drake and Captain Peabody. Good night, Captain Peabody. Good night, Ricky. Good night. I like you. <laughs> Good night, you rascal. <laughs> it's the little girls who always like me, you know. <laughs> I can't tell you how grateful I am to you, Major Drake, for all that you did for Alan. There was very little I could do. Captain Peabody was a friend of his too, you know. Oh, rather. But Drake was more than a friend. He was Alan's idol. He thought there was nothing he couldn't do. He was certain that as soon as Drake hit town, he'd find your husband. Oh, I say, I, I'm frightfully sorry. Perhaps I'd better be toddling oh, off. Oh, no, please, you must stay. Well, if you insist. Here are some things of your brother's. Well, that's uh, his last letter to you. It's, it's unfinished. Your friendship meant a great deal to him. How he counted on bringing you home. It meant a lot to me, too. I never had any reason to come home before. You mean there was no one? No. No, I know what it is to be alone. That's why I keep my promise to your brother to help you find your husband. That is, if I may. You mean you'll try to find him? It's the least I can do for Alan. Poor Alan. He can't thank you. And I can't thank you enough. All I have left now is the hope that you'll find Derek for Ricky and me. I think perhaps we've got to go now, boy. Yeah. You'll come again soon. As often as I may. Goodbye, Captain Peabody. Bye. Be careful, son. Don't go fall in, will you? Hello. <laughs> I believe you'd rather sail boats with him and sit and talk to me. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> You're so good to him, John. He's awfully fond of you. Yes, I'm fond of him, too. I've been very happy this summer. Happier than I can remember since the war began. So have I. I hate to think of leaving. Leaving? Yes. I'm going away. Going away? Yes. We'll miss you. Yes, Melinda! Ricky! Oh, my Ricky. goodness! Griff, my goodness, Ricky! Didn't I tell you to be careful? Oh, didn't I tell you to be careful? You little rascal! <laughs> now, mind your boat, Ricky. <laughs> oh, Ricky! Wow! I don't blame him for slipping. He's very slippery here. There we are. All in his new suit and everything, goodness gracious me. He'll be all right. Is Ricky all right? Yes. He didn't want any supper. I put him to bed and he's asleep now. Oh, that's good. Is 
sit down, John. Did you really mean what you said this afternoon? That you were leaving us? Yes. I feel I must go. I've done all I can to find Marbury and I've come to a blank wall. Of course. That's right. There's nothing now to keep you here. Where are you going? Oh, I don't know. I thought I'd go to Canada. You mean... there's someone back there? No, no, no. There's no one else. I'm sorry you want to go. You don't understand, my dear. It isn't that I want to go. I must go. Then there is someone. No, no. There never could be anyone else. John, we're behaving like children. You love me, don't you? Yes, I love you. Don't you understand? I've lived four years in a dream. Now I'm awake. I love you. Derek. Derek! Why do you say that? Even now you can only think of him. Derek, I'm sick of that name, Derek! But darling, won't you please understand? I understand only too well. You love him now and you will always love him. It's something I can never overcome. I tried to keep my word to find him for you, because you loved him. And then, because I loved you, I hoped that he was gone forever, but I fought against it. And now, he'll always stand between us. Nothing you or I can say will ever alter that. I can't explain it. It's something that I can't fight. It's driving me mad. It's not that I'm jealous. I know I haven't the right to be. But I can't bear it. You understand? I can't bear it. But listen, you must listen. I don't want to listen. I can't stand it. That's all. I can't stand it. Please. So, uh, Drake's leaving for Canada, eh? Well, it doesn't surprise me. Strange sort of a fellow. Strange? Well, peculiar. Well, as to that, I've seen people even more peculiar. Have you, uh, known him long? Yes. Was he really shell-shocked? I say, how did you know? I say, look here, what is this? Is it a post-mortem or a jolly old coroner's inquest or what? Then you don't know anything of his past, do you? Yes, that, that is no. What do you know? As long as you don't know, I hardly think it would be sporting of me to give him away. However, my advice is to leave his past severely alone. Oh, I say. And if you have any influence, you might suggest that he try Australia or uh, South Africa. Canada might not be so healthy for him. I say, now, now look here. This thing has gone far enough. That's where this thing's gone. You seem to know a lot of unpleasant things about all sorts of people, don't you? Well, in this case, you are wrong. I know Drake. He may have been guilty of, of latches, mayhem, or arson. But he's Major John Drake, VC, DSO, uh, etc., etc., etc. And, uh, and Croix de Guerre with palms on. And anyhow, who gives a tinker's blast? And not only that, if the pipe fits, put it in your shoe and smoke it. Hello, Marbury. Why'd you call me that? Oh, come now, Marbury. After all, I'm Bob Hayward. Bob! Bob, you're Bob Hayward! You're Bob Hayward, and I'm Marbury! I am Marbury! That ain't Marbury! Don't you see what happened? Your brother shot himself. Don't you understand? No one has ever known. Help me get him up over the parapet. Come on, help me, Bob. He's dead, I tell you. He's dead. Can't you see? Your brother shot himself. Can't you see? What's the matter here? Why, it's Drake. Quick, get a doctor. He mustn't talk. It's dangerous. What's the matter with him? Shell shock, poor devil. He's fainted. Wait, get some brandy. No, no, no. Get a doctor. Here, help me with him, somebody. 
But doctor, he doesn't even recognize me. Oh, he'll be all right. I've had cases like this before. This shock tonight has restored his first personality. If we can hold that and put him over into the second, everything will be all right. Derek! Derek! Darling! Lucy! Lucy! Derek! Darling! Why, Lucy! How did you get here? You know, that doctor certainly is a mysterious fella. Wouldn't tell me anything except that I'm in London. Tell me, am I badly smashed up? No, darling. You'll soon be all right. You know, it was very funny. I was just up to their wire when... Woof! And here I am. Do you know anything about my company? And Gilroy? Poor kid, I do hope they can bring him home. Darling, all that happened over four years ago. <laughs> now, Lucy, darling, don't be silly. The war is over. Won't you understand? Look. Don't forget your name is John Drake. I remember absolutely nothing. When you get well, well, we'll both find our husband. Sometimes, we can even forget the most beautiful things. I can never forget you. No. I've lived four years in a dream. Now I'm awake. I love you. Oh, my poor Lucy. Oh, hello, Peabody. Hello, old chap. Feeling all right? Let's see, have you been in an accident? Not at all. I've just been punching that fellow Hayward's nose. That's what I've just been punching. <laughs> <laughs> 